Oh, okay. Um, good morning, everybody. As I mentioned yeah, on Discord, I've got a little bit of a cold. I apologize. I'll try to mute my mic anytime I sneeze because I am an obnoxious sneezer. It's terrible. People hate me for it. I don't care, and I'm unapologetic. Um, Black Hammer, the worst thing that I possibly did in my entire life, if not my one regret about anything is giving you that mod space on Discord because all it has done is go to your head. I hate you. Um, I have been getting some really amazing, like semi-perfect mods for Gungans um, with like the exact correct um, primary speed, protection, protection percent on it, and like offense, and then it rolls like the stupidest, um, the stupidest shit that I want. Like that one secondary that I absolutely want to stay at one is the only one It goes all the way to five. Um, and I hate you for it. And every, every single time it happens, it annoys me and I just think of you. So I hope you're happy. Ooh, ooh that's good. Got like a maple pecan coffee going on this morning and I threw some of my, the last of my amaretto in it to hopefully help me out a little bit. Limestone, good morning. I got you up de uh, on deck, actually the first one that we're going to do today. Uh, and I was looking at your Discord message and it was, I guess, like a, like a personal challenge that you kind of gave. Um, we'll, we'll see what happens, right? We, we will see what happens. Um, let's just double check this real quick because something is looking iffy on my end. Okay, perfect. Yeah, um, we have, um, <laughs> we have a Nespresso for like our, well, we have a regular coffee pot for like, uh, work days. And then we have our Nespresso for Sundays because my wife wakes up four hours later than I do. Um, so when I want coffee, it doesn't make sense to brew a whole pot. Um, Black Hammer, my, um. Uh, not tarples. Boom, Boomadier has pretty good mods. I'll, I'll put I'll put them in there. Do I have my adapter um, in here today? I think I do. No, I don't know where my adapter is to throw my phone in. But you know what? I'll I'll look for it later. Remind me, and uh, maybe we'll be able to look at the mods that I've been able to get so far. Um, but with that said. There's really not much going on in game today. Um, we had a cupcake territory wars, so uh, I did use my Gungans in territory wars yesterday against separatists, even with only four of them. Uh, Phalanx tanked like a champ, um, even though he's only G11, and this was like a full relic squad. Um, but I woke up this morning, and, and basically everything was done. So there's really nothing else for me to do in game other than to just get right through these roster reviews. So let's see what we got here. I know Limestone is up first. I still want to make sure to get into the habit of tagging these. Let's see this personal challenge we have here. Ah, all right, so. Let's see what Eggy has to say when there's no Jabba to recommend. That honestly makes me happy. If I could go a whole day without recommending Jabba, that'd be perfect. Get R1 and Fleet every day doing two battles on auto. That's beautiful. Um, I miss the Profundity meta days. Rebel Roundup. Okay, so we're doing pretty good here, except Secrets and Shadows, we could get that CT3. Maybe, it depends on what we're at. And we don't have any fanatical devotion yet, which is interesting just because I did take a very brief look at your GG when I pulled it up this morning uh, to be prepared and being in K2, it's just strange. Um, let's see. What are you currently working on? Finishing some neglected teams and characters with relics such as R1, uh, Night Sisters, Cam. Uh, I don't know why GBA, I... I immediately went to like Great British Bake Off, which it would be GBB, but um, 
I mine is I think still G12. Uh, so Genosian Brute Alpha, Im Troopers, and Scion currently have a Zeta deficit. Of course you do. Um, so focusing on small projects like that, let me try to hoard some before Bane unlock after this coming conquest. All right, so we're getting Bane on the fifth. I um limestone. I um. Is that if you go first, or is that if you go first or second? It doesn't matter because I can do it manually. I've never tried it on auto, um, but I kind of want to because I've noticed when I use the MK6 starting lineup, if I go second, the battle is really easy. If I go first, I have to completely change what I was doing, but I can still win it. Um, so I, I'm when you do that, is that with an R9 assassin? Is that my my assassin's R8? Um, it'll make me really happy to to know about that being an auto, um, because I, I hate the Leviathan um, mirror match. It's it's awful. I, oh god, I hate it. Uh, in the longer term, my next four projects are going to be Seer Malakos, Ufu Team, Star Killer, Inquisitors, and LV in no particular order. Scythe unlocked after next conquest. Reva less than six months away. Are you dead set and continuing? Only Cam just got into seven after years of waiting. My Cam is still G11 personally. Uh, it's like 80 regardless of posing. Interesting. That's good to know. Um, I'm going to test that out over the next couple of days because I just hate that battle so much. Um, and again, if I go second, um, I have, I'd say like a 95% success rate. Um, if I go first, I using the MK6 route, I have like a 70 or 80% success rate, which is mind-blowing. Um, so I'm going to test that out next week. Thanks uh, thanks for letting me know about that. Are you dead set on continuing just cam? How highly do we value efficiency versus fun? I fail to see the difference. That's basically me. Um, except for Gungans because that's ridiculous and I'm doing it. Uh, okay, so let's see what we got going on here. Let's pop our .gg up. Let's take a look. Uh, Morning to my, my, my Twitch friends. I, I was neglecting you because, um, so like the Septicons and, and, and Jar Jar, um, I have a separate YouTube thing up just because the chat usually bugs out YouTube. So when I'm looking at, um, when I'm looking at Discord, I don't always get to see the Twitch stuff. So good morning, guys. Um, all right, let's see what we got going on here. K2, 3402, 3647. 30, oh, you're right below me in K2. Um, I did my little stint in K1. I'm actually one more battle away from going back to K1, but I, I don't I don't know if I'll win this one. We'll see what happens. All right, really no reason to look at that. One thing I do want to look at, though, is our guild. 411, read history... So we're getting the two, the two thirty box, whatever box that is. Uh, all right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So Lord Vader is our last one, which is why it's on our radar. And again, I don't hate Lord Vader; he's just so expensive. But at this point in the game, I, I do think it's largely kind of worth working towards and just get an idea of how close we are to that. Not bad. Uh, do we do bow yet? Not yet. No, no star killer. Okay. The Jedi Knight Cal thing always bugs out. That's why I always have to check it and then kind of look here as well. Uh, Want to check Jade Kyle uh, Dash Talon Talon's very low. 
interesting. And then let's look at just to see Hondo um, BT1. I almost never even look at these guys. So we haven't really even done anything with that. Let's check out these Night Sisters. Okay. And let's see these Inquisitors. All right. Uh, when are we unlocking? We're unlocking Reva less than six months away. All right, so um, at this point right now where you are in the game, especially being in K2, uh, I would I would prioritize Inquisitors over anything else um, just because, well, I want to walk that back. Based off of the things that you've pointed out as, as things you want to work on, I would consider Inquisitors as being your strongest target for something to work on in the short term. The reason being is that you are going to get Reva in the next six months um, from your guild, and it might be, you know, depending on how many shards your guild is getting and people getting it in that time, it might be plus, like minus a month or minus half a month or whatever it is. But Reva largely transforms that team incredibly, and you are going to want to build them up anyway. There isn't a ton of ROI in doing the fanatical devotion. Um, can't watch the that work. Jackson, I, it, I'm glad to hear that, man. I love when people like check in um, after doing a review, and, and I, I appreciate that. So, you know, thank you uh, for that support. Um, what Zetas do you need? I want to tell you right now, this, the Seer and Jedi Knight Cal Kestis, I would go in Guns of Blazing on that event. It, it is it is a tough event. Uh, I tried it with like God Mods and and I still struggle with it. Um, and I know that there are pretty reliable strategies, but it is hard. I, I wouldn't go in under Zeta on that one. Um, but going back to this, I would prioritize the Inquisitors right now. Uh, one main thing about the Inquisitors is that the Fanatical Devotion uh, Assault Battle doesn't really have a great ROI behind it. So it's something that you really don't want to work on until you need to work on it. But you're going to be looking at a couple of months to get these guys where they need to be anyway, just because they are pretty Chirotech intensive. And you are going to want them for Reva, right? Grand Inquisitor does transform the team. Reva greatly transforms the team after that. So it's just like this... this she makes this team so good in, in fives and honestly even threes. I use Reva, Grand Inquisitor, and Seventh Sister pretty much consistently with just one Omicron on in GAC. So while you're not going to get the greatest ROI from that assault battle, you will at least more quickly start getting some kind of return uh, or start building against your deficit. Um, since you're going to want to get them anyway, everything else that you want to work on will help you and uh, you know it'll help you in PvP and other game modes. But this is the only one that's going to provide you a resource backing afterwards. And they're all largely going to be similar in terms of how expensive they are. So I think that going for the Inquisitors right now might be a really solid idea to start working towards Fanatical Devotion. Um, and to prepare for Reva, right? Keep your Zetas for Bane. I understand that you want Bane and, and you're building towards that. I do agree that Bane is more important than Inquisitors, which is why I walked back my earlier statement about it. Um, he, oh my God, with a with an R5 Bane and an R8 um, Sith Assassin, I just delete the hell out of things. Uh, in threes, I took out a Raycron with it, which is just silly considering it was like an R9 Raycron. Um, and and that is basically what won me my last match. So I would say make sure you have what you need for Bane, but then really strongly consider Inquisitors as your next thing. Now, at that point, the Seer Malakos team is amazing in pvp like it is really 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 solid um and i i don't blame you for wanting to go for them i haven't built mine up yet just because of the gungan gear uh the gungan farm 
Um, so if I were to order these projects that you've given me, I would say go for Inquisitors. Well, and you have Bane too. So I'd say go for Bane. Make sure you have what you need for Bane. Go for Inquisitors. I mean, when it comes to Malakos versus Lord Vader, let me just take a look at where your Bad Batches are because that's that's largely the, the, the most annoying part of the uh, Lord Vader grind. Okay. Hmm. I would go for go for Bane, go for Inquisitors. Honestly, when you're talking about like Zeta projects, if you go for Lord Vader next, you don't really need the Zetas on Bad Batch. You do need them to use Bad Batch, but in terms of getting Lord Vader, you don't. Um, I, I'm just a proponent of you might as just get all of the GLs, rip the Band-Aid off. Um, and and I, I think... Man, like... It's tough because I see a lot of utility in the Seer Malakos team. I see a lot of utility in the Starkiller team. And you can probably get both of those up and running before you get Lord Vader. Um... Which really sucks because I, I do I do love my Lord Vader team. The other thing you need to consider though, Limestone, I am assuming you're still here, is what kind of prominence is your guild going to be pushing towards this next raid that's coming out? You know, that's something that we kind of have to think about. Uh, you're only getting the 230 or whatever box that is, so it's not like you're getting crazy rewards right now. Um, but things like the Gungans are going to need to be on your radar. Things like, um, you know, Queen Amidala and her two marquees are going to need to be on your radar. Um, so, uh, you know, that it's just something that it's just something that's going to be really important. <laughs> it's just something that's going to be really important to consider being at your level. Now, your guild, look, it's not the highest guild in the world. You, I, I'm assuming you like your guild, and I'm assuming you like the people you play with because you could definitely be in a 500-plus guild, so maybe they're not pushing the raid super, super, super hard right now, which might be you know, beneficial to you, but these are just things that we want to consider. Yeah, it's more on the casual end. Okay. Yeah, I mean, even at 560, we don't either, but we still will strongly um, suggest things. I love these motherfuckers. Uh... All right, man. I thought this was going to be easier since you had Java. Let's see, Scion. Let's get some of these smaller projects that you're working on. I don't really see Scion as super important, by the way. I don't use I he's mine is G twelve personally. Um, I don't even use him with my my Treya team at all. Um, Rogue One. Rogue One is a good team. They're not an amazing team, you know. Unless you're talking about like Chiru, but like really, by the time you have that, the Datacron is going to be pretty close to being gone. Maybe troopers. You're in true. I mean, what? Is I feel that. I, I mean, my troopers are neglected too. GBA. 
I mean, we talk about like Genosian Brood Alpha though. Like, are you really going to use him in K2? I've never, I've never, in the last year, I don't think I've ever been like, man, I wish I had my Brood Alpha stronger, you know, for, for, for SLKR or for the cheese battles. I, I don't know. So one thing that I will point out here is when you're talking about trying to save Zetas, um, you already largely have um, a good degree of what you need. I'm just pulling up my Night Sisters to compare. Um, you already have a good degree of the Zetas on this team. So let's see, two, one, one. Do you have all of them? You're missing just that one. No, I, I know what you need for Krons, but I mean, the Chirrut one is in the older set, right? So that's going to be gone next month. Um, I would I would suggest working on your Night Sisters as being a pretty good short-term project for you because you already have the Zetas, right? And that seems to be your big sticking point right now is Zetas. Um, and, you know, I, I've talked about it a lot when it comes to Night Sisters. Uh, Night Sisters, I find to be one of my favorite teams right now in the game. They work really great in ROTE. They auto all the way up to the Haven class battle, which is amazing as long as you have the platoons. Um, I do use them every single GAC. They help me as a turtle to break down, um, to break down Jabba teams so that I can take them out. Um, there they well, I, Jackson, I think what he wants the GBA for is more for like cheese teams or like SLKR. Um, but I, I, I think Night Sisters, when it comes to short term projects, is, is a solid idea for you because it'll give you Secrets and Shadows to CT3. It'll give you a team that works really well in ROTE. I use it against Omicron um, DDK in TW, and I use it against Java for a two shot. In GAC now, obviously I'm a turtle, so I too shot a lot of things. You might want to use it for something else. Um, I sometimes, if I don't have to fight a Jabba, I'll use it against Zorikron. Um, it doesn't work as well if Rosecron is also on the team, but um, but I, because you already have the Zetas you're not you'll be able to invest in a team that's going to be useful for you in all the game modes without having to invest any more zetas into the team right so you know i they're they might be a really solid choice for you as a short-term team because they're going to give you exactly what you want a team that you can work on without having to worry about zetas a team that's going to give you a little bit of roi and a team that is going to be useful to you in pretty much every game mode, depending on how high you choose to take those relics. I took mine all to R8. I don't necessarily think that that's the right option for everybody, but if you bring them all to R7, um, you can do the Dathomir special mission, which is some extra get two, I think. Um, so if we're looking at your criteria for the things that you want, and the reasons you want them, and the things that you've isolated currently, this would be a really solid team to work for, um, work towards. Um, I also think that you can work towards your Inquisitors pretty much at the same time, because everybody in your Night Sisters team is already G12+, plus, which means investing in your, Knights, um, in your Inquisitors, you're gonna be investing more like uh, core gear for now, um, Kyra tech in the midterm, right? And then relics later. Whereas your Night Sisters, you'll be investing Kyra tech now and relic material in the midterm. So it'll shore up all of your assault battles. It'll give you a team that's really, really great in the short run. Um, it'll give you a team that's really, really great in all of the game modes. 
and it'll give you Inquisitors, which is really kind of like the missing link in your roster right now in terms of like when you have Grand Inquisitor and when you have Reva, which is not that far away, especially with the time that it's going to take you to do things. So I, I think that what I would do is I would be working on preparing yourself for Bane. I would be working on Night Sisters and Inquisitors as two just really, really solid things for right now. Um, Seer Malakos. Yeah, I, the thing I keep going back and forth on is, um, is Lord Vader. And, and I think we're at a point in the game where we're going to be getting a GL announcement relatively soon, right? After the whole Queen Amidala thing, we're probably going to get a GL announcement. And it might be more beneficial for you to be working on whatever that next GL is since you have the other seven. So I think I would be saying save for Bane, Night Sisters, Inquisitors, do the Seer Malakos, um, keep in mind raid stuff, just work on the smaller projects. But that is the order that I would do it in. At that point, you may already have the things that you need. We may already have the information we need. Um, but I do see utility in Starkiller because his requirements give you um, things to work for on other teams, right? Talon will help with, I use it in my Treya team just to speed up the team um, and make it a little bit more reliable against things like Malgus. Um, KK will give you, you know, something for your Mon, Mon, Mon Mothma team to make them a little bit more useful. Um, but I wouldn't over-prioritize it, especially with Datacrons, largely making it very hard for Starkiller to function on pretty much every set. Like, every set, for some reason, seems to benefit Ray. I don't know why it works out that way, um, but I would put that at the least priority. When we talk about, like, Rogue One, GBA, Cam, I understand. I kind of took him out of the running just because I know that you have, like, like that's you're doing it no matter what. Um, Imp Troopers, I don't think that they're going to give you as much utility as like those medium term projects. And I think if you do that, right, Bane, Night Sisters, Inquisitors, Seer Malakos, after that, you're still looking at like maybe four, four to five months of working on things. And we will largely have a lot more information um, about what's coming up in the game for you to make an informed decision. Once again, though, I would not sleep on uh, raid stuff. Um, you know, you obviously did not prioritize the Gungans already, and it's kind of too late to prioritize them. Um, but just keep in mind that the, um, the Separatists are probably going to be useful for the raid. I'm assuming it's going to be the droids. I know it sucks to cut off signal data, but I've started doing stop just in prepare, uh, in preparation. Uh, I definitely see him as someone who's going to be useful for the raid, especially since he's a separatist and he's a new character. Um, but you can also do that in 25 days. It's, it's, so it's just something to consider. Um, so with that said, just stick with the smaller projects. I see Night Sisters is probably the most beneficial one to you in the shorter term based upon the criteria that you've already provided for me, right? If that makes sense. Um, Tumblo, good morning. Uh, yeah, listen, Night Sisters, I, I love the team. I, I do. Uh, I slept on them for a very long time. Once Marin came out, I dedicated my, my game time to getting Night Sisters up there and and I'm largely very, very happy with that investment. I thought it was going to be kind of like a joke. I use them everywhere. Um, and they're, they're good in... Um, uh, they're good in Conquest as well, especially when we use um, defensive data disks because the defensive data disk, there's a lot of supports on that team um, for things like Zealous Ambition. So it's... It's, it's definitely a team that for a later game player is really useful to have. For an early game player, I think it is something that you can kind of hold off on. All right, let's go. 35. Let's see. Where did, why, 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 there we go. All right, 
Mr. Daniel X. Putting myself in the queue, thank you for providing such service. What's the top 20 of your fleet? Where all Leviathans, I can typically hit top three. Um, cheers, Limestone. I'm, I'm always here to help, and, and you're on our Discord. You know, I like, I like to be active there, so if you have other questions, you know, you can hit me up, but I do. I, I try to look at everything. Um, I try to look at a little bit of everything to get people short up to where they need to be. Uh, are you coordinating talking with your fleet Discord? I know this feels like collusion. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you've ever seen, um, oh shit, what's the name of the The League. Um, it's about fantasy football, and I, at this point in my life, I had never really liked fantasy football or football, to be clear, but um, it's a great show, and hearing about collusion kind of um, reminds me of it. Uh, before we go further into this, I just kind of want to talk about that. When we talk about like collusion in Fleet Arena, um, that's kind of how CG wants you to think, right? They want you guys always fighting over those spots. Um, and you're going to have people who largely are only going to climb during their time, but you're also going to have a lot of people who just want to like climb ahead of time, not because they're trying to step on people. Um, and they want people refreshing for their battles. They want people using crystals to get to number one. They want people like on top of each other um, because then every crystal they pay out, right, less of them are actually useful crystals. Um, collusion is a good thing in this term because if you're in a good shard chat, uh, everybody benefits, right? There are some mafias out there, and I've, I've been doing, I've done like three, four, five hundred of these roster reviews, and I've only heard from maybe like five or six people that they've heard back from their, um, from their fleet shard, and that they were aggressive fleet shards. Um, for the most part, most fleet shards are very accommodating of, of people, and the only person being colluded against is the corporation, is is Capital Games. Um, I'm in a, a very relaxed shard chat, right? Nobody's trying to step on anybody's toes. We want to make sure everybody is maximizing their crystals. So if somebody reaches out and says, hey, is there a shard chat? Can I join? It instantly, automatically, it's like, yeah, sure, here's our Discord. Just follow the rules, and, and the rules are, aren't aggressive things. They're things that are meant to help everybody. Like, hey, don't climb within three hours of your payout. Um, do your best not to hit people. You know, if, if you have an option between hit, getting to number six, but that guy's payout is in an hour, or getting to number seven, and that guy's payout is in 12 hours, you know, hit the guy at number seven, unless like everybody in that group's payout kind of blocks you. Um, if you're in a good shard chat, it's, it's largely very cooperative of everybody. And, uh, and again, the only person that's losing out is, is the corporation. But, you know, I, I can't make people join theirs. Um, assault Battles, CT3, Forest Moon, CT2. So the fact that CT3, Rebel Roundup, and CT2, Forest Moon, that right now tells me that you have Jabba. Uh, places of Power, CT2, Military Might, CT3, Ground War, CT3, Secrets and Shadows, Mythic, uh, Fanatical Devotion, CT2, What Are You Currently Working On, Finishing Rates Ultimate, Zeta Backlog is Real, I feel that. I feel obligated to work on SLKR at End Ray after the Lightspeed Bundles. My guild is very TB focused, so as a general goal, I'm working on clearing all CMs after Ray. Are you dead set and continuing? No. How highly do you value efficiency? I like efficiency over fun. Um, are there any favorite characters? Though I don't like efficiency over helping my guild. Really, efficiency should always benefit your guild. There's very few points in the game where it's not going to. Uh, any favorite characters? I do love Phoenix. Rebels is my favorite Star Wars show, but I like being efficient over that love. For your shard chat, it's a six-month trial. Yeah, I mean, as long as every, every every shard chat has, you know, their own rules. And, and it, for me, as long as it's not, um, as long as it's not mean, as long as it's not malicious, you know, I, I think that shards are, are largely a relatively good thing um, for helping everybody overall. 
Let's see. So let's see what we got. Kyber 4, I think I remember you saying that you all have Leviathans, which means that you're climbing with Leviathan more than likely. Okay, 2, we're mostly hitting that top 5. I do want to, I think I've tried to recruit from this guild before, my bad. 500 million. So there we go, we got Jabba, one, two, three, four, five, so we're missing Jedi Master Kenobi, we're missing C, and we are missing um, Lord Vader. Um, <coughs> Tumblr, yeah, there are actually a couple people in my shard who are not in the Discord. But, you know, we've reached out to them and, and, and everybody comes to an understanding of like, hey, these are the payouts close to you. If you don't hit them, we'll leave you alone. Um, we are very much the same way. And, and there's a few people at my payout hour who are not in the fleet discord. They don't speak very good English, but we've had very small conversations in game. And, and we, we've come to an understanding of, hey, whoever gets, for me and him especially, it's whoever gets first first nobody's gonna cry about it and we don't it doesn't matter we don't trade off nobody cares about those 25 crystals sith eternal oh you're close to that i mean interesting we have that we have that no profundity afra it's so interesting that you're so close on that uh Let's see, do we have Bane unlocked? No, we don't have Bane unlocked yet. Uh, you know, um, Cap, I some people do, some people don't. I value my time over those crystals personally. So, for example, last night, um, I had the option of hitting first to get 400. Um, but there was a profundity in two. And I'd much, much, for me personally, I'd much rather just hit the profundity, get it over with, let the other guy in my time slot get that um, 25 crystals, and then I can have an auto battle. Um, so for me, I, I just don't. And I know that a lot of people in the Leviathan structure um, don't care as much. But I also know that you have a lower GP and you're punching up consistently. So for you, they, they might be, you know, more important two quests all right let's see what we got here i want to check out your assault battles and see if there's anything we can shore up here forest moon um from what i've heard inquisitors can do forest moon at ct3 with reva so i i would i mean let's see it, it looks like These are some strange fucking mods. What? Is that a speed mod that has no speed on it? Oh my god. <laughs> uh, Cap, tell me what you think about these, these mods here. Like, who? <laughs> oh my god. Oh. I remember watching your whole thing about that perfect mod and how beautiful it was and and you spent five minutes just talking about it. Is this like the opposite? And I don't intend this really to be like a, a roast. I'm not here to roast anybody, but like that's like what the fuck? Oh. There's speed mods with no speed on them, and they're at is green six six C or six A. I, I don't don't tell me are those six A mods? I don't remember what color six A is. Oh, my man. Oof. Uh, let's see. Boss nah. Oh, okay, gold is six A. I don't, oh, 
Let's see what we're looking at here. Oh. This is killing me. <laughs> you know what? I saw it at like five in the morning. It didn't even it didn't even it didn't even register to me. Um that that like I didn't oh god, I can't get over this. <sighs> okay. It's just, I want to, I'm just curious. What, what even, oh my God. All right, we're going to pause our regularly, regularly scheduled program to talk about this because, because these mods are, they're, they're not so bad that they're, view oh. I'm just curious. I need to know. This is what's holding us back here. I'm just, I'm just curious the difference here. Yeah, like, all right. So Dan, I, I need you to look at, this is my account and I'm not telling you that my, my mods are great cause they're not right. But I am telling you, if you look at my top screen, we're looking at like GLs with like plus 170, um, plus 160 from speed. And we look at your account and the highest that we have is plus 128 mod speed, which is rough. Like it's really, really rough. And, and again, I'm not here to, to roast people. That's not what I do. That's, that's not my thing. I very rarely even look at mods, but when I saw your Reva squad and I was like, Hey, how is he not getting forest moon to CT three with Reva? I just needed to take a look. So, you know, it looks like you're very haphazardly applying your um, your six dot mod materials to things just to kind of get them up, right? Getting things up to get them up. You need to develop like a mod strategy for bringing mods up. Now, Captain Amazing, he's got this beautiful uh, video that kind of it's what put him on the map, I would say. Um, and allowed him to blow up as, as a creator is that it's just such a useful guide on like building up um, strong mods and, and strong speed mods. I understand not having great luck and I understand having not great mods right now, but you have to develop a system of understanding when to give up on a mod versus when it's time to bring them to 6E or when it's time to bring them to 6A um, and when it's time to just cut your losses, right? For the most part, um, my gray mods, you know, I, I delete anything that doesn't have five speed on it. Um, and I delete anything once I bring it to 6D um, if it doesn't roll speed. Um, so basically nothing that I'm putting on from, from, from a gray mod is ever going to have less than eight speed. And that's, that's the low end. That's a five roll and a three roll. Um, when it comes to like buying gold mods, if a gold mod doesn't roll at least 11 speed for me, I just delete it. it it's not worth it. Uh, you really need to put some priority and focus into modding. I don't, I'm not somebody that does mod refreshes often, but I would recommend really trying to jump on your modding as much as possible in the short term and putting some priority towards those mods because you will see a significant increase in your ability to play this game, both from a guild perspective and from a PVP perspective, if you put some priority towards that. Now, the, again, I would say like 5% like of cases, this is not true, but as a general basic rule, every secondary on a character should have speed. Right? There are a few instances where you don't want that. Meryn needs zero speed. She doesn't gain TM the same way, so any speed is wasted. 
um, you know, some tanks, you might want a crit avoidance arrow or like a, um, or like a health arrow uh, for like General Grievous. But even with General Grievous on an arrow, you, if you can get speed as a secondary, it's, it's not the end all be all, but it is helpful you need to go through your mods and change some sh some shit up. I'm going to tell you right now that Forest Moon CT3, you can do that tomorrow if you remod that entire um, Inquisitor squad um, for high speed uh, using whatever other mods you have on whatever other characters. Places of Power with First Order with Supreme Leader Kylo Ren, you can CT3 that, though it will be um, at one star, uh, you might have to, again, you might have to remod for that. Um, but these are all things that are only on the table right now because of what you do or don't have. You could honestly probably do CT three of places of power, um, right now at three stars using a team like Papa Palp, uh, Darth Malik, um, Darth Neilis, where's Treya, Treya, and you know maybe Malgus in there. You can more than likely, if you remod that team, you could get CT3 um, and start to build up more relic ROI on that. Uh, Fanatical devotion. You should be able to do that at CT3 if you remod that team with like your strongest mods. Um, let's see. I'm assuming your Night Sisters. Okay, Night Sisters are not great, but that's fine, though your rebels. I'm assuming you. Your rebels, um, I mean, if you, again, if you remod these guys with Captain Rex, you should be able to get CT1 on Secrets of Shadows with your Phoenix um, without too much issue at all. Um, but I can only imagine that your modding on them is not. Yeah, it's not super great, uh, which is what's holding you back, right? This this speed crit chance mod that has zero speed on it, um, this speed defense mod that has zero speed on it, that's what's holding you back more than anything else. You could be doing CT3 on all of your assault battles, except for the um, except for the Night Sisters and Phoenix One, which you'll be able to do at CT1 if you put some priority towards that. And I would largely say that yes, you absolutely, hands down, without a shadow of a doubt right now, should be spending some of your priority and some of your crystals each day towards those refreshes to try to get this shored up um, as quickly as you possibly can. Um, in terms of characters, you know, Esselkar, Kaya, and, and Ray, you, you pretty much have them done. Ray, you're doing the ult right now, so you should be finished up with that. I would be going for C next, just because you are so close to C that it kind of doesn't even make sense not to go for C at, at this point. Um, you're 500 circuit boards away from that. That's, that's a very easy, very manageable, very quick farm for you. Um, so I would... I would largely prioritize that as as your next as your next thing. Oh my god, those mods. It looks like your guild is not doing super great on the raid um, for your level. Um, you're hitting that I don't even think you are hitting that two hundred box. You have made some improvements over time, which is nice. There's this nice jump like right over here. Um, the 99 to 177, but that does mean you're not going to have to put a terrible amount of priority towards this next raid as it comes up. It is maybe um, something that you want to kind of think about a little bit, but you don't have to go too crazy with it. Where are we with Cal? Oh, you do have Jedi Knight Cal Kestis. Okay, good. Um, I mean, if we want to work on things for your guild, you know, Seer and, and Jedi Knight Cal Kestis, uh, 
getting to Zepho is is really nice. So that's another short term project you can be working on. Um, C obviously is that other short term project that you can be working on. Um, do we have? Don't have Star Killer yet. We have Kyle working on Talon. Uh, Dash working on Dash. Kyle Cowan Dash. Who's the Latmara Jade? So Star Killer is something that you're also very very close to. So I'd be working on C. I'd be working on Seer and um, C. Seer and Jedi Knight Cal Kestis, and I'd be finishing up Star Killer. Um, I don't want to give you too much to go for after that because I really think that the biggest, most fundamental change that you need to work on is your modding. And you do need to put some of your resources to that. And you do need to refresh your mod energy. And you do need to, um, you know, watch some of Captain Amazing's videos on modding so that you can understand modding a little bit better. I think that in the medium term, it should really be a priority for you to try to get some of these characters that are your top characters out of the 128 plus speed to the 150 uh, to 170 area, especially your GLs um, and, their, and their respective teams. And the nice thing is that even though your mods aren't super great, some of these mods can trickle down um, to you know, two other characters, the ones that are like semi good, as you start to invest in them, and those Reagan triple uh, trickle down, you know, nineteen eighties um, dynamics will largely be a help to you to kind of get the like third sister, man, with plus sixty eight speed, man, like that that is where you need to put your time that is where you need to put your energy thankfully you have java which is going to help you with it with smugglers run too but i would be doing at least three mod refreshes every single day and that's something i never recommend to anybody um because this has to be shored up as as soon as as soon as you possibly can uh more than anything else other than that finish the ray alt go for c next um, work on Seer, Jedi Knight, Cal Kestis for the Zepho to help your guild out. You're going to struggle with it, though, without high-speed stuff. Um, and finish up Star Killer. You know, at that point, it should take you a little longer than normal because I think mods, modding, mods, mod all the time, all mods, all day, you need, you need to, you could be in K2, you should be in K2 right now. Um, and mods are what's holding you back. So, uh, so mods, um, I don't, I don't have much more. I, again, I never look at people's mods and I'm frustrated by this because you mods, that's it. That's we're that's, that's all we're saying is, is mods. We, you need mods. Uh, so hopefully I get mods across, um, and, and that you understand mods and, um, and you start to work on mods and mod, we're going to move on. And uh, my PTSD will will continue to live on with those mods. Uh, let's keep going. Uh, hopefully, I don't have an aneurysm uh, because that was that was a silly account. Uh, all right, what do we got? Just got SLKR. I am uh, Alan. Good morning. I apologize. I was so dedicated to modding that um, I didn't wasn't paying attention to anything else. Uh, just got SLKR. I am slow farming Radis Capital to finish the requirements so they can go together. I want to head towards Java or Profundity by the end of the year. My plan going forward is let's see SK into Caprex into Zori, into Thrawn, into RG, Shore, 
into Treya, uh, C3PO. Okay, I want Jedi Knight Revan to DR to Malik, but I also am not close to any of that. Working slowly on, you guessed it, mods. Uh, is SOKR worth an R8 right now? Jar Jar, we are saying mods. Just mods, mods, mods. Um, it's kind of like Lord, Lord, Lord on, on, on South Park. If someone wants to mess with that on Discord and maybe put my face on that meme, just mods, mods, mods. Uh, Lordy, Lord, Lord. Okay. Most of them are CT1, if not zero. Is SOKR worth an R8 right now? Uh, honestly, I think where you are in the game, haven't really fully looked at your account, but I'm going to say probably not worth an R8 in the short term. Believe it or not, SOKR is actually my only GL that I don't have at R8 yet. Um, and I plan on it. I have nothing against bringing him to R8, but, but I just have so many other projects that are more important. See we got here. We're finishing first with Executor. Nice. Um, it looks like some days we're not. I'm wondering if that's basically just a time commitment issue, which obviously is fine. We can't all be on all the time. Just the one GL. Let's take a look at some of our assault battle viability. Let's first take a look at this. Okay. We definitely want to get a new crit damage arrow, um, crit damage triangle to see if we can get some more speed there. But overall, that's an. I'm just out of curiosity. Right. Like this 4 million account has a, 160, a plus 160 speed character and the other one doesn't have any and they're a 9.5 million account, which is crazy. Um, all right. So, first order, uh, places of power, you should be able to do this at CT3, just crew and... Crew and Supreme Leader Kylo Ren alone should kind of be able to shore that up. Um, it is annoying because you'll do it at one star. Um, you can probably do, I wonder if you can do it at CT2 for two stars to not waste so much time. But that is something that you should be able to do right now. Um, let's go for Imperial Troopers. Let's see what we got here. Imperial Troopers, Veers, Stark. If you bring Stark up to like G12, Admiral Piet, um, where's range? I would bring range up to G12 and seven stars. If you were to do like Veer, Stark, Piet, maybe Moff Gideon and range trooper all at G12, you can probably do CT3 of Forest Moon. Uh, Rebel Roundup might be a little bit harder but at least you should be able to do CT2 there if you kind of bring those things um, to where they need to be. You might even be doing CT2 of Rebel Roundup just with these bounty hunters, and if you're not, um, you know, just do a quick remod with Bosk, Boba Fett, Grief, Mando, and I'd say Dengar. Uh, you shouldn't have too terribly much trouble going to CT2 on that. Okay, Ground War is going to be a little bit rougher with what we have right now. If you bring Captain Rex up, which I think you've isolated as a pretty short-term plan, you throw some Zetas on this team, probably uh, like Hera's leader or Unique. I think it's her leader. Um... You'll probably be able to do CT1 of the Night Sister one with Captain Rex at like uh, G12. It does trivialize that, but CT2, CT3 are going to be a lot tougher without um, Night Sisters. Okay, we don't have to worry about these guys right now. Commander Luke. Han, Chewie, Chew, 3PO and Chewie. In this time, did we get C3PO? No, we have not. Let's check where those Ewoks are at.
All right, so we're bringing these. I, I mean, I'd bring Nessa up for the C3PO event just because you're so close to her right now. She's not accelerated, but you're at six stars. I would I would do that to maybe trivialize the event. It'll make it a little bit easier. Don't sleep on Wicket, though, because that's two free Zetas every time that event comes around. Um, so definitely, definitely don't sleep on Wicket. It, he will make the event easier as well. And those two free Zetas over a long period of time are really nice. All right, so in this time since we've talked, you did build your Star Killer out, or at least you built him um, and you're getting him to relics. Let's check out what we got going on here. Morning Snorquist. Is that a silent? It's like a snorquist. Snorquist. All right, I'll stop. I don't want to get annoying. Let's see. Bought the light speed bundle there. Let's see this here. Jedi Knight Luke, Jabba. We're pretty far from Jabba. Executor we have. Profundity we're not too bad on. Sith Eternal. Let's check some of this stuff out, shall we? Uh, we don't even have Skiff unlocked yet. We don't have Bosch unlocked yet. Curse of Tam we don't have unlocked yet. Let's see, Mon Mothma, not yet. Okay. Um, Wampa we have. Hermit we don't have unlocked yet. Rebel Officer. Right. Um, so... Looking at our goals right now, uh, first of all, we need to start working on Rebel Officer Leia um, for Jedi Knight Luke. Make sure with the bounty event that you're always going for her shards so that you're not waste because you're, you're going to have to probably buy some with Get 2, but you're using as little Get 2 as possible. Um, finish Star Killer because you're already there. Finish Captain Rex because of the ROI that you'll see from Captain Rex. Um, let me just check on where you are with Ray right now. Okay, so we have, we are building towards Ray. I would not speed up the Ray Radis farm. You're going to be in a Zeta Crunch, um, and you have a lot of things to be working on. So I would do the slow farm on the Radis Crunch. Just let that event come as it comes and then work towards, you know, building Ray. I don't generally tell people to go for Ray early, but these light speed bundles, you know, they make short work of a lot of us. Um, and I do think that you're close enough to it that in the short term it is useful to do. I also think that it'll give you a little bit of time to work towards Hermit Yoda and a little bit of time to work towards Rebel Officer Leia so that you can work towards Jedi Master Luke in more of the medium term. I think that you are a classic case of going for Jedi Master Luke into Jabba. Um, and that's going to help shore up almost all of your assault battles, or at least the important assault battles. And it's going to really significantly help you with your modding. But because some of the things you're going to need for Jedi Knight Luke just aren't there yet, doing those slower, smaller projects are not going to be problematic. So Supreme Leader Kylo Ren, yes. Captain Rex, yes for those Phoenix. Um, I would say when we're talking about like Thrawn RG Shore, uh, I would say go for... Uh, I don't know if when you say RG you're talking about Royal Guard or um, like... I guess it would be Royal Guard, but I would say go for a short, not short trooper, uh, range trooper. He is going to help you with that Forest Moon event, and it kind of is one of the vehicles that does really help the Imperial troopers go, you know, burr really fast. So I would do like SK, Captain Rex, um, range trooper, um, working on your Ewoks towards CLS. Those are your short term goals. Your uh, medium to long term goals right now should be Ray in the shorter term into um, Jedi Master Luke, 
who is going to do a lot of things for you. He's going to give you, you know, largely CT3 on ground war, CT3 on military might. You are a plus four million or greater account. So it's going to help you with being able to compete in conquest. It's also going to help you in GAC uh, as well as territory wars. But then you're going to want to push towards Jabba because you really do need to put some priority um, towards your modding. That's going to give you that CT3 of Rebel Roundup. So you're going to find a huge ROI jump in your account. And at that point, you can start working towards more of your other shorter term goals or smaller goals that you want to work towards. But I think the only ones that you should prioritize right now are SK, Captain Rex. Again, I keep seeing RG and in my brain I'm thinking Royal Trooper, but it's a range trooper I'd work towards to kind of maybe build on that forest moon a little bit. Um, Ewoks for C-3PO. Those are the only right now uh, short terms that you should be working on. Ray is your medium term farm. Work towards Jedi Master Luke. Work towards Jabba. That is going to kind of build you in for quite a long time. It's going to work on some of the farms that you want to work on. It's going to work on some of the farms that I want you to work on. And I do think that it is going to significantly, significantly, significantly benefit your account. All right, we're going to move on from here. My coffee is empty. That makes me very, very sad. I'm going to take a quick two-minute break to go to the bathroom, fill up my coffee cup. Um, while I'm doing that, guys, if you're not on Discord yet, get on our freaking Discord, man. We're, we're, we're doing crazy stuff, and we have um, the Territory Battles Library we actually opened up last week. Um, so for those of you guys for next week who are going to want to see some of the things that you need um, to beat different battles and territory battles or want to submit your own videos, that section of our Discord is opened up for you guys. I will be back in two minutes. Uh, do what you got to do and we'll get, we got, it looks like four more um, roster reviews that we're going to try to get through this morning. And I haven't sneezed yet, which is pretty awesome.
All right, it looks like we are back. Jar Jar, if we have time, I, I can't promise anything. It depends on how long it takes us to get through the next four. But if we have time, I will happily look at that for you. Um, uh, we got four more to go, and and time isn't really an issue today. But you know, I do have some things that I'm I got to get done today. We're actually filming a Tales episode uh, later today, as long as everything works out. So if I have time. We'll try to get to that. Um, we got four more. Let's see what we're at. One, sixteen, forty-five. Papa Chapa Chopa. Papa Chopa. I want to say. Let's say it that way. I don't actually have to say anything, but we'll see. Ba -da 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 -da, ba -da -da -da. All right, here's my dot GG. Top 20 in Fleet Shard, 8. Leviathan, 7. Executors, 5. Profundity, and a Partridge in a Pear Tree. Just joined Fleet Discord this week. I am proud of you, kick ass. Um, not sure on Assault Battles. I'd say receiving Relic Mats on at least half of them. We'll take a look. Currently working on Glow's Ultimate. Then there's 3 characters to R7 for Ray after that. Then 4 characters to 7G12 for Jedi Knight Kill Kestis. Then I'm, um, oh, I'm buffing out unfinished teams. A lot of my teams are stuck at prerequisite level G12 from Journey Events. Padme, GG, Malgus, Sith Emperor, uh, Empire, maybe Leviathan soon. Cat, what? Ooh, Cat, not there yet. What? Trio, Savage, Talon, 501st, Bam, Cat, Bane. What sucks most is most of these are essential GAC teams I've put off for the last year, but I'm hoping. Hoping to be a snug in Kyber, be snug in Kyber by the time they're better. I've been free to play since 2020. Last fall, I finished working on Leviathan. The the eternity of my roster, the entirety of my roster to 85, gear 7. It would help if I could read better. Uh, fully upgraded, upgraded recommended mod sets with speed and abilities upgraded to 7. I've also 7-starred every shipping character that requires any type of shipment token except for Cam. But our guild is planning on switching to LSGO in a couple of months, so that grind will start soon. Okay, um, so lower, on the lower side with guilds, but let's see, let's see where we are at. Iridium, 7 million. 7 million and your guild is going to be switching to LSGO. Hmm, what terraforms. 297. All right, we're going to hold that thought. Let's just check this out real quick where we're at. One, two, three. Three GLs. Let's check out these ships. Executor, Radis, okay. Da -da -ba -ba -ba. Fleet rank 38. So you just joined your fleet shard. Um, did we say what we're doing? 8 Leviathan, 7 Executor, 5 Profundity. So you should be able to get into the top, really the top 10 at least. Right, Executor can beat Leviathan with the right amount of investment. I don't necessarily think that's the right case for you, but you should definitely be able to push into the top 10 with what's currently um, on the board. Uh, so I'd, I'd really try to prioritize your fleet to at least be getting those 200 crystals. I noticed you said you didn't have a Relic Bam. Um, I think one of your smaller term priorities should be getting those pilots to the levels of at least R5 for executors so that you can maybe more consistently get into the top 10. Um, it will be largely very, very, very beneficial to you. Let's just take a look at our assault battle viability here. So we have Supreme Leader Kylo Ren. We should be doing places of power at CT3. We have Jedi Master Luke, which means for the most part, we should be doing military might um, at CT3 and um, ground war at ct3 without too much issue uh let's check out 
Our bounty hunters are pretty good to where we should probably be doing CT2 and Rebel Roundup without too much issue. Okay, this might be a little bit tougher. Let's see. Well, maybe not so bad. Let's just check out a Separatist Forest Moon. I think you could probably, I, I, I've talked about this before, but there was an old cheese we used to use for um, Forest Moon that involved um, Papa Palpatine, Darth Vader, Grand Admiral Thrawn, and a G12 Grand Moff Tarkin, and slow and steadying it um, to kind of like um, cheese with Tarkin's AoE. Um, I don't remember all of the details, but basically the idea was to go as slow as possible, only using Moff Tarkin's, uh, Grand Moff Tarkin's uh, basic ability and his debuff ability, um, and and just really stacking up his potency so that when you got to level four or to um, uh, to level eight, you could pretty much knock the entire team out. So Forest Moon is the only one that I think is iffy, but I think you should be able to do at least at least CT one on it. Um, uh, I didn't mean to hit Rebels. I meant to hit Phoenix. Um, so you said you were free to play since, I've been free to play since 2020, but these, these Phoenix very clearly say I got the, um, the Lightspeed bundle. Um, we're not going to harp on that because I don't actually care, um, you know, spend whatever you want to spend. But you can probably do CT1 of Secrets and Shadows with these guys without too much issue. Inquisitors are lacking. We don't really need them, though. Did I forget one? I don't think so. I don't think so. We should be pretty good there. All right, let's take a look. Currently working in Glow's Ultimate, then there's three characters to R7 for Rey. After that, then four characters for Jedi Knight Cal Kestis. Let's see where these guys are at, shall we? Seer, Cal. With Cal, I would not work on any of them until they're accelerated. Um, just because if you unlock them as they accelerate right now, you should be pretty good for when he becomes permanent. Um, so anything kind of invested right now is almost just wasteful for you. Um, I think all of them except for Tarful and Saw are accelerated. Um, let's see. Working for Ray Once again, same thing with Radis for Ray. I would slow farm the Radis um, because you're going to be in a Zeta deficit. Yeah. Does somebody want to say it? Anybody? Before I say it? I'll give you a couple seconds to guess. See if the chat knows me well. Anybody? Going once? Going twice. <laughs> Go for Gungans. I love it. Um, Jarja, you see, I, I, my Gungans are up there now. They're getting there. Uh, you need Java, man. Like, exactly. This is this is this is this is Java territory. You need Java. Uh, Java smugglers run too, man. Where you are in the game, especially because you went for Leia. Uh, I mean, you already have Bosch done. Java, Java is your your medium term project right now. You can do Ray. That that's fine because because Ray is very close to where you need to be. But you need to start working on those Java requirements. Um, and you could probably get Jedi Knight Cal Kestis without even slowing down Java because you're gonna have to build up the things that you need for him anyway. So it's not really a big deal. You know, slow farm towards Ray 
with um, her ship and, and get her stuff out of the way now. Uh, start working on your shards for Java things. Just five battles a day. You don't even have to do ten. You don't have to speed it up. You're not going to need to speed it up. Start working on your Jedi Knight Calcestis as they become accelerated and do five battles a day. Don't go further than that. Um, start working on your Jedi Knight Calcestis stuff to G12 as they become available. But Jabba's your medium term project, right? So Ray, Jedi Knight Calcestis, and Jabba. No, there's no other answer. It's Jabba. Um, Smuggler's Run 2, hands down the highest ROI event in this game right now. You need it. You've seen all of the people that I've talked to today with like not really great modding or mod scores. Um, let's see where we're at. We, see, for where you are, it's it's not. It's funny to me that Tarples is one of your highest um, and he's three stars. But um, and same thing with with Paz. Um, but for where you are in the game, you don't have awful modding. You could be doing better, and you most definitely need Smuggler's Run. At that point, that's when you can start working on all these other things, right? So you have Padme, GG, Malgus, Sith Empire, Cat, Watt, Trio. All that stuff is great. Um, but Jabba, right? Jabba, Jabba, Jabba. Um, let's, let's take a look at some other stuff, though, before we... Give our final Fergus uh, verdict. Malgus is not there yet, but I'm assuming you're doing that Proving Grounds, which means you don't have Fury class, but you do have Jabba, which means you can do the Fury, um, the Proving Grounds for that. Um, dagger. Sith Fighter, yeah, B28. Good. Um, B28. Mark six. Okay. Um, so I agree with you with where you are in the game and, and where you're doing things. Uh, it might not be a bad idea to start going for Leviathan. I know you don't have Malgus yet, and I have no idea where you are with Malgus. And I know you don't have Fury yet, and I have no idea where you are with Fury. But both of those things are in Proving Grounds. Um, and Malgus has been in Proving Grounds for quite a while. So hopefully you've been building those shards for a decent time, and you're going to be unlocking him relatively soon. Uh, Fury, it's going to take you a little bit more time, and towards the end of that, you might want to consider uh, refreshing Proving Grounds a little bit to get it faster. You don't have to do it right now, but I could see Leviathan being a better um, next GL fleet for you than Profundity, just because it's much newer, um, and because you're... It's not that you're not far away from it, but it is kind of isolated on your teams that you kind of want to work for. But um, Ray, Jedi Knight, Kelkestis, they're pretty close, and Jedi Knight, Kelkestis kind of will solidify where you are in your guild. Um, Jabba is going to sub significantly help you in every aspect of this game, and it's going to give you CT3 on Rebel Roundup. It's at that point that you can start working on all of these like little things. Now, Bam and Cad Bane are the only exception. For right now, getting those two to R5 um, is going to be helpful to you for being able to get more consistently into the top 10 with your executor, right? Uh, so I would consider those pretty much priority projects for you. Um, I think IG-88 is a requirement, yeah. So I would maybe do that first, but then Ray, Jedi Knight, Cal Kestis, and Jabba can kind of work together. Um, Leviathan, I would start working on those ships five battles a day in the short term, if possible. Sith Fighter, I believe, is a cantina farm, so you don't have to worry about that one as much. You can do that whenever you're ready for it. Um, but all of these other teams that we're looking for, Padme, GG, Cat, Watt, Trio, Sa Trio, Trio, Savage, Talon, 501st, right? Those can all wait for after Jabba. Um, and because Leviathan's going to take you some time after Jabba, you'll be able to kind of work on those things in tandem with working for Jabba. So um, one day I think that you guys need to keep track of how many times I say this in a stream, but Jabba. Um, there's, no, there's no other answer but Jabba at this point, especially for you being with where you are having done... Um, general leia organa i always i see glow and then i think of the netflix show that i've never even watched um i don't i don't think there's anything else other than that your modding your modding will help that's going to help you with your gac 
Um, I will say that you're kind of in that weird spot with your guild where if you really love your guild and the people in your guild, then, then great, like I understand that, but you could probably be doing a 350 to 400 guild to kind of help you out and build yourself up. Um, it just seems weird to even consider uh, light side geo, which is an awful clusterfuck. It is nice that you have Watt at seven stars, though. You don't have to worry about that. Um, but those are my thoughts. I'm sticking to them. Let's move on. One, thirty, one, thirty. Man, that Benadryl is starting to kick in. That is, it's just such a lovely thing. I would have been dead at 10 if I didn't have Benadryl. Darth Pat. Ugh, I don't have a GG. This is why I set these GGs up ahead of time, uh, because I don't have a GG here, but I uh, was able to find it uh, easily with the ally code. Oh, I love espresso. Huge fan uh, of the Discord and all you do on Reddit. You've replied to me a couple of times, and then we had a nice little back and forth about me hoping I wasn't a dick to him. Love a roster review when you get a chance. Buyer of Light Speeds. Recently unlocked SLKR and 710 of his ultimate. Currently working on Executor R8 Boba and R5 Dengar and Pilots are all that remains. Finished top 20 in fleets as of now. 11 Executors now exist in the Shard. Um, I'd love advice on efficiently finishing that farm or anything else I should do after. Maybe even some mistakes I made along the way and characters I've missed while I've worked on SLK and Executor. I've been getting the shards for Revan's requirements. So listen, I don't like to dwell on mistakes because um, if you made a mistake, you already did it, right? Like it, it's not worth looking at things that you might have screwed up. Um, what I would say is, do we see this here? Ba -ba 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 -ba. Try to reach out to your fleet shard. If you're mostly a newer shard and you have, and there's 11 executors, um, you could probably be hitting, well, okay, so we're not there yet because we haven't finished executor. I have to learn how to read. Um, well, at least you're hitting the top 20 right now, but once you get executor, you should be good to be hitting one. Let's see what we got. Supreme Leader Kylo Ren, I don't know anything about your um, assault battles. You should be doing places of power at CT3, probably one star with crew and um, Supreme Leader Kylo Ren. Let's check out our rebels. I see you have a relic commander, Luke Skywalker. One, two, three, four. You have all these guys locked up. Uh, I hate that this arrow, they're not this arrow, that some of these mods um, if you listen to this entire thing, like we've, we've talked about modding so many times, you need speed on all of your mods. That's just a general rule. That'll serve you correctly for pretty much like 99% of your roster. Um, you might be having trouble hitting CT2 or CT3 on Military Might, and, and if you are, it's only because of your mods right now, but you should be doing CT3 on Military Might. Um, with with high speed uh, CLS team, right? You, you you need to go talk to Captain Amazing. You need to watch his modding videos. Um, it's it's just something that you have to do. But you should be doing military might at CT three. Um, maybe even just remodding for the event in the short term. Okay, Jedi, not super amazing. But once you have Revan, I see you're working on Revan. Once you have Revan, if you do like uh, Revan, even at like G12, Grandmaster Yoda, General Kenobi, um, like maybe Bastilla Shan and Jedi Knight Anakin, um, you could probably do at least CT1 on that one. I'm assuming the same thing here, right? If we look at these... Yeah, this is, this is all modding, right? There's no speed on a lot of these things, but you could probably be doing, let's see, Veer's Stark Piet, right? So maybe get Stark to G12. Veer's Stark Piet, Dark Trooper range. 
should be doing CT3 on Forest Moon, and I doubt you're doing that just because of speeds right now. Um, that same team, without investing any more relics, you should be able to do CT2 on Rebel Roundup with really no issues. Um, but again, if you're not, I'm assuming that it's coming down to how low your speeds are um, on some of these characters. Let's see these light speed bundles. Captain Rex might be a really good short-term project for you. Um, if you Zeta, Captain Rex, and like Hera's leadership, I think it's the leader that gives her the unique sharing thing. You should be able to do CT1 um, of the Night Sisters assault battle relatively low because you bought the Lightspeed bundles here. at some of those requirements in a bit. Okay, close on executor. Let's check some of these things out. Da, 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 da. Wampa. So really start prioritizing your get towards Wampa and Hoda uh, and, and again, Rebel Officer Leia for Jedi Knight Luke, um, absolutely start anytime the bounty event comes up for her, make sure you're doing the Rebel Officer Leia tier so that you don't have to wait, uh, so you don't have to waste so much, so much get to, uh, in, in the short run. Um, let's see, currently working executor, R.A. Boba, R5 Denger, and the pilots, all that remains. Um, that's good. Beskar. Don't forget Beskar Mando in your R5 requirements for Executor. It's not a hard requirement, so it should be the last one you do, but it is going to help Executor perform better, um, which is going to help you into getting to the top 10 and getting into the you know the top five and, and to getting to one. Um, so, so it is something that you should consider super for the, the short term. Um, when we're talking about ways to effectively and efficiently farm things, you know, I try to take like, I guess it's like three pronged approach. There's, there's three different levels of farming a team. There's farming the shards, there's farming the gear and there's farming the relics. Um, and you can do all three of those things at the same time, four different farms. So as I get to the relic requirements of a farm, which is where you are with executor, you should be working on the gearing of the farm for the next thing and the shards for the farm for the next thing. And as you finish the shards for the next thing, you should be working on the third thing with it. So everything kind of funnels down where I'm just going to pick random characters out of my ass right now. But as you're working, um, is it paid relic requirement? Um, CJ, here's, here's the thing, man. I, I have a discord pop on our discord. It's, it's in our YouTube notes and, and this is how I do things. Um, I do have a link for, for donations to my beer fund, but I do things, um, I do things totally donation based. I don't ever put people out. Um, but I do have a little bit of a line. I almost always have a line. Um, so if you go to our discord again, which is in our YouTube, um, and you find my little area, I can get you in the line for those reviews. I don't ever um, force anybody into giving me anything uh, and, and because I want people, uh, I, I firmly believe in the information being free. That, that's one of my biggest thing. Uh, and I know I'm getting off topic because I'm talking about Darth Pat's re relic requirements right now, but we had a really great discussion on Discord last week about like my, my YouTube club right which you can pay for monthly and like the twitch has the same thing and and my buy me a beer club has the same thing um but uh, one of the things i i do is 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 uh my uh my 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 clubs don't offer too many 
benefits because because the information I want to get to everybody. Um, you know, so I, I, I rely 100% on, on people who are able to um, and, and not take away from people that are not. But to get back onto this, let's just pick three farms out of my ass for a second. Um, you know, I might be working on the relic requirements for uh, executor like you are. While I'm working on the gearing requirements, um, <laughs> while I'm working on the gearing requirements for Jedi Master Luke, while I'm working on the shard requirements for Java, right? So it kind of trickles down. And as I finish Executor, I'm getting into the relic requirements for Jedi Master Luke. So I'm getting into the gearing requirements for Java. And I always have like this trickle down effect that everything I'm always working on each new thing as it comes down. And I have like the spirit fingers thing going on that I just noticed. Um, Adam, good morning. Uh, who are we roasting? I, I try not to. We've we've had a lot of like roasting this morning, but I try not to. I, I try to. Um, the only grief I've had is modding issues with people this morning. Um, so I would right now. This is classic case. We talked about this with a lot of people already. I would be finishing executor. That's largely going to really help you. Um, I would be going the executor Jedi Master Luke um, into into Jabba route, and and that's going to shore up a lot of things for you. It's going to give you pretty much all of the um, the assault battles that are high ROI, right? Military might, ground war, places of power you already have, um, forest moon you should be very, very close to, uh, and rebel roundup. It's going to give you all of those things to go down this route. It's also going to significantly impact your modding. Um, and as a player who is a little bit on the higher end of, well, really more the middle end of uh, the game and, and Conquest. Having Jedi Master Luke is gonna really help you with Conquest as well. Um, so I'd start putting significant get towards Hermit Yoda and towards Wampa for for Jedi Knight Luke. And I would start putting, you know, not your get to just yet, but making sure that that bounty event, you're putting things towards getting Rebel Officer Leia because you're firmly on that train of building out that early ROI of finishing Executor, which is what you're doing right now, um, and going into Jedi Knight Luke and then going into Jabba. Captain, when it comes to assault battles, um, the Phoenix, the Night Sisters one and the Inquisitors ones are the ones that I generally don't prioritize. They're not super high ROI until you start using those teams. Um, I will sometimes suggest to people like here where we, I think if I remember correctly on this one, but I want to double check uh, that we got, I think we got the Lightspeed bundles right. Yeah, we did. Where if you already have the Lightspeed bundles, you've done most of the gearing already where I tell people, hey, go for Captain Rex because it will give you a really great GAC team if you apply the Omicron um, and it will give you that assault battle. So you'll be using the team at least at CT1, which to me is the most important um, tier of ROI for an assault battle. So Inquisitors, I tell people to wait until your guild is pushing Inquisitors. Night Sisters, this is the only situation where I say even go for CT1 right now, even though I love my Night Sisters. But this is very, very, very firmly a case of Finnish Executor, Jedi Master Luke, into Jabba, really look into those mods. Again, Captain Amazing is awesome when it comes to mods. Uh, he's, he's, he pushes up and he, he, he fights himself up to be into K2 at a much lower GP than I do, um, because he knows his stuff for PVP and modding. Um, but for the most part, 99% uh, of your, um, of your character should have a mod that has a speed secondary on it. And 99% of your arrows should have a speed primary unless you happen to have a very high speed secondary arrow, right? In which case it is worth it to lose just a little bit of speed for a really great primary. If you have like a plus 20 or a plus 25 speed arrow, um, it's worth it to get rid of those five extra speed on that really great character and put that on somebody else. Um, but the, 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 you can watch the entire stream and, and you're gonna be, you're in the same boat as really like the last three people that we talked to um, in terms of everything. And I think that'll put you in a position where you can either decide to just 
rip the bandaid off and go for other um, to go for other galactic legends or you can decide at that time to kind of work on smaller farms because you did get the rebels lightspeed bundle that might be the time to start working on profundity so that you have two um, GL fleets one of which is going to get you your fleet mastery to um, to number one constantly and one of which you're going to just slow farm those shards over time to um, to be able to kind of help you push in PvP. All right, so we're going to move on from there. I don't have too much to say in terms of things that I already haven't said, uh, you know, 400 times this morning. 146, 30. I'm loving it. So we got... These are only a couple days old. I, I like when I get to do roster reviews that are only a few days old because then I can go, oh, hey, this is, you know, I, I'm on the, the same track as everybody here and, and I don't have to make guesses and I don't feel so bad. There we go. Uh, Lord Sheldor. Fleet, almost fully cooperative. We all have executors, but there's one Leviathan that doesn't play nice. I do get first almost every day. That's good to know. Assault battles, looks like we're pretty good on them. Military might, we could probably shore up. Ground war, we could probably shore up. What are you currently working on? Java, fucking love it. Great, we're not going to change that um, at all. Are you dead set on continuing? Java, perfect. I'm not changing Java at all. I will never change Java. Are there any favorite characters? No. Efficiency is most important. Love that too. All right. Let's see what we got. Iridium 2, 6 million. We're getting first pretty much every day with an executor, which is nice. Let's take a look at what we got going on here. Sith Eternal, Supreme Leader Kylo Ren, Grand Inquisitor, Third Sister. Are we only doing... Okay, Forest Moon, we have CT3. Let's just take a look at the ones we're not doing at CT3 yet. One, two, three, four. Where is Chupio? Is that why? Ah, uh, Chupio is G12. Do we have Mon Mothma yet? Mon Mothma's not there yet. Let's check out our modding here. It's speed issues. Um, Even with a G12 Chupio, you can probably do CT3 of Military Might if you just take the morning to remod towards that event. Um, if you really don't want to remod towards that event, it looks like you're almost done with Mon Mothma. Um, and she really trivializes the event even at pretty relatively low investment if you bring her like G10, G11, um, seven stars. You don't even need the Zetas. Um, the trick to that event is using the event special on everybody in the first tier and then really largely just hitting auto if you use Mon Mothma instead of Chewbacca. But with what you have, Commander Luke Skywalker, put Chupio in the second slot, Chewbacca, Han Solo, C-3PO, um, as long as you remod, because your, your speeds on your characters are not super high right now. I think even with a G12 Chupio, you can probably, probably get it. Now... Let's see, CT2. Yeah, I see CT2 with these guys. Um, just because you don't have access to a lot of the much stronger Jedi right now, but that's okay. We're not going to put too much focus. The important thing uh, with, with Assault Battles really is CT1, right? As long as you're getting CT1 on the important ones and you're getting CT1 on all of them, so that's where we want to focus right now, and and we're we're relatively happy with that right now. So so we're we're in good. Just ba -ba -ba -ba. let's check where we're at with Java. All right, not bad. Not 
and we did the Sith route for the first. Um, it's my favorite first GL personally, um, though I haven't been requ uh, recommending him as much lately. Just check this out. Ray or Profundity? Did I? I didn't even look at Ray. I don't ever think to look at Ray. Lightspeed bundles? Yes, Lightspeed bundles. All right, Java is your first up, and I'm not upping my counter because that is something you're already working on. I'm happy about it. Yes, prioritize it. It is super important. It is something that you want to work towards. It is going to help you with your modding significantly. Uh, even though Ray is really, really close right now, I don't necessarily see her as a high priority. Um, you know, let's just see. I would slow farm the Radis requirements. Um, hmm. I just, where are we in PVP? Mary J, you know, I don't have any of those cool bots up. Were you, um, were you on three scoundrels two weeks ago? Is that you I heard? Six million. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. I was like, wait a second, I recognize that name. Ba -da 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 -da. Yes, it was you. All right, I thought so. I was like, oh, I know somebody. Awesome. Bones is all mad at me right now because Bit Dynasty got some love on Reddit and he wants uh, three scoundrels to get some love on Reddit. I'm um, doing good. I, I had my first coffee. I had my espresso for the morning. I'm happy. Let's check these things out. Ray or profundity? Let's see what our profundity looks like. I don't know why I'm typing in profundity. That's stupid of me. Radis, you're working towards. Okay, ships. Profundity was the first thing I ever got first run. Um, ever. Here's my thoughts here. Um, yeah, I don't have any of that stuff. Um, I would, yes, finish Jabba now. Um, Jabba's great. He's going to really help you with your modding issues. I know that you're super close to Ray, but I, you're also, you've done the hard part of Jedi Master Luke. And I think that doing Jedi Master Luke is going to benefit you just a little bit more. Um, for Conquest as a 6.5 million player, uh, SLKR is really good at proving grounds, which you already have, but Jedi Master Luke is also really good at proving grounds, so it kind of shores you up a little bit if you're having trouble with any of them. Um, and it's a very versatile team in terms of um, setting things up uh, in GAC or, or in Territory Wars. Uh, because of your modding, you're struggling with military might. This should help you because of Mon Mothma so that you don't have to worry too much, but really you should be able to do it now. And because you don't have all of like like um, Jedi Knight Revan at a high level or anything, you're struggling with military might even though you have Jedi Knight Luke. Jedi Master Luke should really help you with that as well. I think I would be doing Jabba into Jedi Master Luke, into, um, into Profundity, into Rey. And Rey only because you're relatively close because of the Lightspeed bundles. If you listened to Darth Pat's uh, roster review before, we talked about kind of like that cascading effect of while you're finishing Jabba and you have you start working on the relics for Jabba, you should be working on the gearing and finishing up the shard farming for Jedi Master Luke. And as you're working on that, you're working on the shard farming for Profundity. So it kind of all trickles down. Um, the nice thing is that the hardest part of the uh, Ray farm based on what you currently have, you are going to build up anyway, um, which is Radis over time. So you'll have that ready for you at that point. 
Um, but I think that for you, it comes down to Java first, Jedi Master Luke, uh, profundity to kind of give you that secondary fleet, especially if somebody's got um, Leviathan and they're kind of being a dick. Um, because we are going to see a new fleet meta kind of shift uh, in, I don't want to say the near future, but by, I feel like, the end of the summer. Uh, you might want to look into, let's just kind of check this out. Now, Scythe is a, um, a Proving Ground ship that is in Proving Grounds already, uh, or I should say a Conquest ship that is in Proving Grounds already. So you might want to start looking into prioritizing that a little bit to help you counter that one Leviathan and maybe the Leviathans that start to pop up. Um, the Sith, the, the Scythe counter is pretty reliable once you have it down pat. Uh, I don't know how many shards you have of Scythe, but it might be a really good option for you short term because you already have Third Sister and you already have Grand Inquisitor. You already have that team kind of built up. But I do think that one of your biggest things is going to be, you know, Jabba into, and look at this. This is, this is much better than the ones that we've been seeing, um, but you definitely could benefit from from better modding uh, in terms of speeds. But overall, I do think going the Jabba into Jedi Master Luke, into Profundity, into Rey um, uh, route is the route that is probably the most uh, advantageous for you as a player. And it will take you a pretty decent amount of time. But again, don't sleep on your modding. That seems to be the issue a lot of people today are having. Um, Java should help you out with that, right? Java should kind of get you uh, down pat for that. Will all of these farms help you overall? Uh, a largely, largely, I do think you know. Yes, uh, you should be pretty good at, at that point, and and that's kind of the point where you can kind of choose to do smaller uh, farms if you want to choose smaller farms, or if you want to take a break from GLs. Once you have those things shored up, you'll be relatively good with your account. Um, where you are in the game, I think that your assault battles are in a, a pretty good spot. But once you have that Jedi Master Luke, it'll help put you and cement you into kind of the top spot of ROI. Um, at that point with those things, I mean, it doesn't make sense to guess. My, my initial thought is to say for go for Leia Organa at that point, but we're looking six to eight months down the road, and I don't like to look that far down a path because things change. We might get a, a, a GL in the next six months that just has so much better ROI than the other ones. Um, so I think with where you are so far, you're in relatively good hands. So let's move on. I have one more for the day, uh, which is kind of cool that we're getting through all of them. I like when I can get through all of them in one day. Um, then nobody has to wait. Let's see. We're going to go to the two-hour mark right there. Fyros. Fyros. We were on a break. I don't know. started years ago. Ooh. I'm just stalling because I wrote two hours on my timestamps and I'm lazy and don't want to change them. So we're going to wait till it hits that two hour mark, which is right now. And let's get this one started. Uh, I'd appreciate a look over. Started years ago, then inactive, then resumed, just to be top in Fleet Arena, but struggling even after getting Profundity. Fleet of my shard is Leviathan, top eight, then mix of Executors and Profundities. No idea on Assault Battles. Currently, I'm working on Jabba, but I'm totally opening to changing to efficiency. I'd like to get better in Grand Arena as well. Thank you. Jabba probably is your highest um, ROI character that you could be getting right now, but let's see. See where we're at. Doing profundity. Um, you need to talk to your fleet shard. You, If there's only eight Leviathans in the top 10, you should be hitting the top 10 pretty easily with this fleet. Uh, I will tell you that if you use the same opening line... Oh, let me throw my GG 
on. There we go. Before somebody yells at me. Um, using the same fleet in Fleet Arena, but you put Tie Bomber in as one of your reinforcements and you use it as the first reinforcement, you can auto other profundities once you um, put Tie Bomber. Once you call Tie Bomber out, you'll be able to auto profundities because it stops their. Um, it stops all of their assists with burning. So that's something to largely consider for Fleet Arena. If you only have eight Leviathans there, you really should not have trouble hitting at least the top 10. If you are not talking to your Fleet Shard yet, you need to start talking to your Fleet Shard, reach out to them, say, hey, say what's up, see what you need to do, get on the list. Um, it will help you significantly to go from, I mean, you're not even hitting the top 20 right now, which I think is, so you're getting 50 crystals a day. Uh, top 20 is 100. Top 10 is 200. You should be at least getting those 200 um, without too much issue at all. Ray, SLKR, Jedi Master Luke. All right, we're going for Java. Yes, Java. Hands down, love it. Do Java. Um, but let's check out our assault battles right now. Places of power, you should be doing CT3 because you have... Um, because you have, what's his name, Supreme Leader Kylo Ren. You have Jedi Master Luke, which means with Jedi Knight Luke, you should be doing CT3 on Ground War. Um, let's see, Military Might, ba -da -ba -ba -ba, Rebels. You really should be doing CT3 on this as well. Um, I'm not going to give you advice on these things because you're telling me you don't know um, but if you come back and you're like, hey, I'm not getting CT3, then, then message me and, and we'll talk about it. Um, the things that you can do to kind of shore those up a little bit if that's the case. Okay, so Imperial Troopers are not doing it for you. Did I see Inquisitors? No, we don't have Inquisitors. What about these? Separatists. So you might be doing CT2 on Forest Moon with these with these Separatists right now. So that's that's at least pretty good. And I, no, I didn't mean to hit Bad Batch. Um, you should be doing CT2 depending on your speeds. Definitely CT1 on Rebel Roundup. Uh, obviously your um, Inquisitors... Uh, not great, so you're getting a zero on Fanatical Devotion, which, again, largely is pretty fine. It's, it's really not a big deal. Where's my Phoenix? You should be doing at least CT1 on the uh, Fanatic, not Fanatical Devotion, Secrets and Shadows, maybe CT2. CT3, I know, is just really too tough for Phoenix, but definitely CT1, that's important. That's the important one. Uh, actually... I mean, with these Night Sisters, if you invest in Marin, uh, you should be able to do CT3 with these Night Sisters. Uh, and largely, it's just a great team, uh, a short run team, especially since you've already invested so heavily in them. I would be putting that investment towards Marin now. You'll get CT3 on, on the Night Sisters, uh, and you'll have a really solid usable team. Um, what are we working on? Da, da, da. We're working on Java right now. Keep hitting the wrong things. In case of doubt. Break in case of Java. have this we have this yes but up 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 sith eternal no we don't care pop pop we are far from that we're all right we're not too bad on java interesting we want to be doing better in gac i believe Right, is that part of our goal here, I think? 
Oh, no, that's my next one that's coming up. Uh, Want to do better in GAC. Let's just check out our Omicrons real quick. We have Wampo. We have Treya, which is nice. We have the Ad Rad one, which is nice. Um, let's see which ones we are missing. I wish when you do what to Omicron, it showed your characters, which would largely be helpful. Zoricron. You might want to consider that Zoricron because you already have the Ray team. That'll definitely jumpstart. Let's see where Zori's at. Yeah, I, I would definitely do the Zori Omicron in the short term. Um, hands, hands, hands down. No questions asked. I would be doing that. Um, just with where you are. Java. Okay. Curious on these guys, Drogon, Nessa, uh, the hell are the other ones? Rex, we already have. And Drogon, Nessa, Rex. Who was the first one? Drogon, Nex, Nessa, Rex. Drogon was the last one. Rex, I think, was the first one. Drogon, who? Oh, Scout. Scout, we don't have up. What about our Iden Troopers? Okay, we don't have that up yet. All right, here's what I think I would do. Um, going for Jabba, you're already doing it. Do it, keep it going. Uh, I want to see where this guy is at, Star Killer. I definitely level up Star Killer. Um, so in the short term, you're still a little bit away from Jabba, um, and that's fine. You're still working on that. And are we still working on our requirements at all? No, not really. So that's nice. Um, but I would I would do Star Killer to at least R five pretty quick term because you already have him unlocked and that'll be a very fast thing for you to do. So I'd be doing Star Killer and I would be doing Jabba hands down. That's going to be a really solid one for moving forward. It's going to help you significantly um, in the modding department. It's going to help you with Rebel Roundup CT three. It's going to help you in GAC. It's going to help you in TW and, and it's one of my most used um, conquest teams. After doing that. I don't normally tell people to go back for executor, but I would consider going back for executor just because you're semi close to it. I would not refresh the event. I would just let those shards accrue naturally because having more GL ships is going to help bolster your fleets to get to Kyber uh, more easily. So I think that it is a um, it is something that I would prioritize. Um, I would also really go into General Leia, which is something I almost never um, recommend. But because you already have Jedi Master Luke, because you are working on Jabba, because you already have Profundity, um, because Captain Rex is already there, because um, one other one was already there, I think maybe it's Drogon. Uh, was it Drogon? No, it's not Drogon. Who was it? Captain Rex, Nessa's close. I think it's just that they're close to being upgraded. Um, I would consider General Leia as being a strong GL, not for the raid because the raid will be over. Um, you do get a little bit of ROI from Ender Escalation, but that's not why I'm um, that's not why I'm suggesting it because the ROI is not super great on the event. Um, but you're in that like weird triangle square like dynamic with all of the other farms. So I think that what I would be doing right now is I would be prioritizing Star Killer, going into Jabba, going into just finishing up Executor as soon as possible to build free shards each month, and going into GL Leia. Um, I think that that's probably the smartest route for you. I would strongly consider the Zoricron. Um, because you already built out the Ray team and because you already have Zori at Relics. So I imagine that maybe that is something that you've put in, but that's going to help you with GAC um, as well. Um, and I would strongly consider putting at least one Omicron on that Starkiller team. Um, I only have a one Omicron Starkiller team. I think most people have a two Omicron Starkiller team. 
I don't remember which ones are the strong ones, but the way that you, I kind of look at it is I go to like the Omicron report, right? I always Omicron list, Star Wars Galaxy of the Heroes, blah, blah, blah. And then I kind of just look through and I see which, like if it's a three Omicron character, so there is much conflict in you, right? And then force repulse. Um, those are your two major ones, and then boundless force throw is not as important. But I'm pretty sure there is much conflict in you is, is the one that I personally have and find him useful. Um, I think going down that route with those characters is going to help you. It's going to help your guild. Your guild is not super high right now. You could probably be doing better, but you know I've largely given up on telling people to move guilds because a lot of the times the answer is, oh, these are the people I really enjoy and like playing with. Um, and if you're enjoying who you're playing with, then you're going to enjoy the game a little bit more. But once again, Starkiller is a short-term project. I would say Zori is a relatively short-term project. Um, Jabba is your medium-term project right now. Um, Executor is your medium-term project right now. And Gialea is probably more of your long-term project right now. And that should kind of set you up for success. Uh, going forward to do that, right? You have a pretty simple one to work towards, so that should kind of lead you where you need to be. Um, yeah, um, Calvin, you know, it, first of all, I, I don't watch a lot of videos, but, you know, I did chat with him once, and, and he's a great guy, and he is very helpful, and, and I, I wouldn't take his stuff as law, but I can't comment it on that because I didn't see it. Um, if you are interested in why certain Omicrons are useful, that's probably a really good resource for you. He is a good resource. He is a very intelligent guy. Um, and, and I hear a lot of great things about those videos. Um, for someone like me who is undiagnosed ADD and is constantly like, I can't sit in front of my computer, um, uh, then I think the easy way is to just go to the Omicron report. And that's what I do with modding. People ask me like, oh, how do you mod your character? I go to the, the modding report, I go to Kyber 1, and I see what those players are doing, and I just follow them because they're much smarter than me. And I'm all about work uh, work smarter, not harder, instead of reinventing the wheel. So if you're interested in why things work, Calvin, awesome. I do agree. He is a great resource. If you just want to know what works, I go to the Omicron report, and I see what works. Uh, Andrew, at what point would you recommend switching guilds? I think if you are in the top 50% of your guild, it's usually pretty good to look for a new one. Now, there is a diminishing return on that. So once you hit a certain point, right, once you're in like a 450 guild or a 500 guild, you might be at the top of your guild and be relatively happy. But when you're in the early game to mid game, if you're in the top 50% of your guild, you probably can find a better guild for yourself that'll help you advance um, a little bit faster. Um, I wouldn't take that as law, but more as a general rule. You definitely don't want to be a guild hopper, um, so you might not want to do it every time you hit that top 50%, but once you do, that's when you want to strongly look at your options and try to jump to a guild that maybe is more um, part of the ecosystem that you want to be a part of. Uh, the guild that I'm in, Awakened Mandalorians, it's only my one, two, it's only my third guild ever. I don't jump often. I do love my guild. I do love the people I play with. I could, I, there's a few people who have been very actively trying to recruit me to their guilds and, and they're people that I talk to often and I wouldn't switch even though my... Um, my rewards would be a little bit higher because at my level it's just not worth it anymore um, to start over like that, at least for me. Um, but when you're still building your ROI, you, you might jump guilds two or three times before you, you find the guild that you're happy with. Uh, it's about 10, 20 right now. I do have one more that came through uh, while I was talking, I want to try to get that one done as well. I believe this is someone who was on stream just before, and I had told them to kind of head towards um, that has a 
Yeah, CJ, man, I'll, I'll tell you right now. Um, oh, so you're on now. Perfect. I'm going to do yours before I log off. But I do want to take a very quick break to, to go to the bathroom. So I am going to do this in a second. But I want to answer your question first before I do that. Um, yes, I've, I've accepted like three or four players who I was down a player and they reached out to me right before TV started and I, I let them join and they did really, really well. Um, they did really well in the TV and I kind of said to them, Hey man, like this was just like a short term thing, but if you're interested in staying, you did great. And, and, and there's a couple people in our guild who probably I wouldn't have recruited, but I did because because it was right before TB and, and I'm very happy with them and they're people I'm very friendly with now. Um, you know, but on the same token, uh, I also am very big on respect with my guilds and with my players in my guild and as the TB officer and as the recruitment officer, I love, I treat my, my um, players with so much respect that they generally will tell me a week before they're leaving. They'll say, hey, you know, I'm looking to, for something that's more this oriented, I'm probably going to leave in the next week and, and try to find something else. But I don't want to, like, I don't want to screw you guys over because you've been such a great leader to us. So, you know, I'll wait till next TB. Um, can you find somebody in the interim? Um, so for me, the way that I've treated all my members with respect, I, I get that respect back from them and it's been really helpful, especially when people quit. They'll say, hey, I'm retiring, but I'll play actively for the next week if you could try to find somebody in that amount of time. Um, but with that said, I'm going to take a super, super, super fast bathroom break um, and then I'll jump back in. I'll try to get at least this one more roster review in um, before we end for the day. So give me two minutes.
All right. That took a little longer than I expected because I'm so used to locking doors in my house that uh, I locked the door to my office um, and I had to go find the keys. So let's check. We got one more out. We got CJ here. Maybe I'll have some questions. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Um, but you're obviously totally welcome to give me extra context on anything that I happen to say. We are at 2.21.30. Uh, Fleet Arena is 7, Star Leviathan's down to 25, that sucks. Uh, currently working on Profundity and Leia, one relic left on Radis, uh, C-Rex, Nessa for Leia. After that I've taken all Jabba requirements, Bar, Kirstan, Skiff, and Fennec to G12, and it is my next project after the above two, perfect. In between that I will unlock... Uh, Riva, Ben Solo, Darth Bane, 137 Zeta mats, oof. Uh, came back when the light speed bundles first launched and taking myself from Bronzium 4 to Kyber 3 in a really strong guild with 498 GP, 36 stars in RT. That's awesome, man, with where you are having taken, you know, such a, a decent sized break that it's kind of good that you're able to, you, you jumped relatively well, which is nice. Um... All right, let's see what we got going on here. Kyber 3. <sighs> I'd really love to see you at least. I know, I know, I know Leviathans suck. I get it, but I really would love to see you pushing ahead here. Let's kind of check this out. Mark six, Scythe. Thrawn, good morning. Scythe. How close are we on Scythe? Uh, well, I don't even check if you have GI yet, so it doesn't even matter. Uh, you do have GI. How close are you on Scythe? Does it say here? Ben Solo, Darth Bane, Reva. One, two, three, four. I'm just doing a little bit of digging while I wait uh, on this one. And and if you don't have access to your game right now, just a rough idea. I don't need exact shard amounts usually. Super close on that. That's awesome. Very nice. Let's see. I would like to know how close you are to Scythe, to Malgus, and to Fury class. So all three of those things, if you are still around. Scythe, Malgus, and Fury class. And while we're waiting for that, we're just going to look at some Assault Battle stuff. Oh, love. What is what we got? We got posting in our channel. So... Ba -ba. Ba -da -da. Two, tw oh, look, okay, perfect. So 55 of 330 on Fury class, 220 on Scythe. Thank you very much. Um, ben Solo, 175 on Darth Malgus. <laughs> I, like, I like how the screenshot on Discord has me in the corner. <laughs> oh, that's funny. All right, let's just take a look at some of our Assault Battle stuff because I don't think I have that here. Um, and if I'm wrong on any assault battle, tell me. Say, hey, no, I'm actually doing this, and we'll talk about it. Um, Supreme Leader Kylo Ren, you should be doing places of power. CT2 on all assault battles. All right, here's the deal. You should be doing CT3 on uh, places of power with Supreme Leader Kylo Ren and crew. It is one star, so if you're like, fuck that, and I just don't want to do that every month, I mean, I get it. I understand. It takes about an hour, but it's mostly auto, so you can kind of like walk away from your phone and doing it. Um, but that's something you should be able to do. Uh, Rebel. Let's. Well, maybe it's a modding thing. Let's see. Not the worst mods I've seen, but still not super, super great. But Java's going to help you out with that. I know you're getting close to that. Um... 
if you go into probably even with the current speeds that you have if you do um commander skywalker uh chupio um mon mothma um not chewbacca c3po and han solo and you do the event special on all of them um at the beginning you could hit auto and you could do military might at ct3 you do okay see there we go perfect i was like hold on a second um so you can do those at the CT3. Um, Veer Stark range. You could probably be doing CT3. Well, let's see. I want to see something else for this. No Reva yet, but she's close. But honestly, you could probably be doing CT3. Why did I do that? CT3 on Forest Moon with Veer Stark Piet. Um, range Trooper. And based on what you have right now, probably Moff Gideon. Um, if you just remod without even getting any of them to higher relic levels, um, getting them as fast as possible, you could probably do Forest Moon with what you have right now. Doing this with Phoenix. Well, if you're doing CT2 on Phoenix, then you're you're pretty good um, on that one. Did I forget any that are important to be getting higher? No, because you'll be doing CT2 on this. Forest Moon again. You should be able to get CT3 with what you have. Just some rewind modding. Um, Fanatical Devotion is is one that you should be doing. You can actually do CT3 without Reva, but it's a pain in the ass. I don't recommend doing it. Keep it at CT2 um, for now. You should be. Um, pretty well off there. I just want to check out our scythe again. Um, so you, profundity, here's what I'm going to say. Uh, and I don't, again, I don't have a ton of info on this because I never have to do it, but I, I think Bit Dynasty actually has a video on this. Um, and Solo Straight has a video on this. And a lot of people have, vid I don't know why I'm going to different links, have a video on this. But profundity at seven stars with a mark six in the opening um lineup can counter leviathan without too much effort in the short term um so you might want to consider doing at least five battles on mark six a day um especially because you're going to want leviathan eventually anyway um but profundity can also counter leviathan you know 60 70 percent of the time uh, you can do with Scythe at 220. You're going to unlock that in the next 240, 260, 280, 300, 310, 330. In the next six months, um, the is it Executrix uh, counter, or maybe it's Thrawn, one of them, counter to uh, Leviathan is, is relatively. Um, with Scythe is relatively reliable. So you might, for ease sake, want to consider maybe refreshing that once a month to get it down to three months, um, just so that you're climbing better in your fleet shard because right now you're not getting the fleet dominance that you should be getting. Profundity will help you. Um, even if you do like Mark Six once a day, it'll kind of be the same thing as getting Scythe but I'm pretty sure Scythe is a little bit more reliable. Um, so you might strongly consider doing that and that'll kind of get you into that top five and give you some ROI there, especially since you already have Grand Inquisitor. Um, obviously finish Radis. Obviously finish Profundity. Um, you're super close, you should be doing that. Uh, let's check out this Leia farm, how close we actually are to Leia. All right. Sometimes people say they're closer than they are to things, and then I go like, "Uh, no, you're not." But you, you are. You're, you're very close to Leia. Um, I would be doing Profundity, Leia. Yes, Jabba. Jabba is gonna just be super, super, super helpful to you in the shorter term. Um, Bane hands down you you'll be getting that actively buying shards in conquest 264 
so the next couple of months that that shouldn't be terrible like really the next two months especially if you're buying shards anyway one two three four five six with leia and jabba let's just see how close we are on c for shits and giggles What's this guild we're in? Very nice guild. What are they doing for their raid history? So one thing I want you to consider based on what your guild is doing, uh, and it looks like they kind of like punched up and pushed and were um, relatively nicely. We kind of did a recent push too. Um, you're probably going to want to consider some raid prominence. Um, in order to keep those rewards from your guild. And I, whether or not your guild forces things on players, um, a lot of guilds don't, but they're probably going to ask for players to be doing things. And I do it, think it is important for people to kind of like do things for... Uh, <laughs> phones. <laughs> oh, auto mod, Mary J. I just, I just saw that, um, and it doesn't let it through. Um... <laughs> let's see didn't let it through I, I don't know it, it's just funny when I see those things because I don't pay attention to Twitch as much um, your guild is going to want you to do things for this raid and, and, and build build some kind of prominence with these characters so it's just something that I would kind of largely keep in mind whether that's Gungan, Gungan or not It's not so much about being safe or not safe. It, it's it's about setting a good standard, right? So I'm not saying go all in on Gungans. Um, uh, what I am saying is basically as the recruiting and the territories battle officer for my guild, I sometimes have to do shit that I don't want to do in order to set the standard for my guild. Um, morning Solo, we just, I actually, I think I probably um, Beetlejuiced you because I was just talking about you. Um, so I, for the example, have an R9 Mon Mothma. People wonder why I have an R9 Jedi Knight Luke instead of an R9 Jedi Master Luke. I have an R9 uh, Hoth Rebel Soldier, and it's not so much about they're important to have, but if I'm going to ask players to relic shit, not that Jedi Knight Luke is shit because he's not, um, but if I'm going to ask people to relic shit, I have to be prepared to relic shit too. So... As an officer in your guild, if you're going to try and push that next, you know, having the same rewards for the next raid or higher rewards for the next raid, uh, in order to ask other people to do things, you're going to have to also be willing to do those things. Um, Gungans aren't necessarily off the table now that Phalanx is out, but I would just keep in mind that you're going to want to do some of those teams. Um, and we, we don't have any information right now other than Gungans, other than some kind of Separatists, um, other than Queen Amidala and, and friends. So it shouldn't be a prominence thing. It should... Boba Fett. Uh, it should be a back of your mind thing, right? To kind of think about those things um, and, and just to make sure that you're on the same page as everybody else with, with your raid. Um, I like what you're going for right now. I, I Profundity, I would have done Jabba over Leia, but you're too close to make that change at this point. So Profundity into Leia, into Jabba. Um, you're kind of waiting for a Lightspeed bundle for C. I don't personally agree on waiting for a bundle, but I don't think he's high priority for you. So I get why you're doing it, right? Um, so I, I do I do understand that. Um, that's going to be kind of where you should be looking at raid stuff, right? At that point, uh, let's just kind of get an idea of where our Omicron teams are at. It seems like you have... Right, GG's not um, suggesting anything to you that to me is standing out. So that's always good. Maybe Zori, let's see. Do we have that one? We do. Zori might be one that you want to really strongly consider. 
I would I would definitely farm her now that she's accelerated. I was super low interest in Zori, um, and I just kind of slow farmed her, and then I didn't do anything with her. And I recently, in the last three months, have been putting some. It's gonna take time. These are just things to consider. Um, I just started putting some priority towards her, and I relicked her, and I omicroned her, and I'm I'm like, man, why didn't do I do this six months ago? Um, I could I see her as a short term thing for you to work on as not doing 10 battles, just five battles a day. Um, I don't think that there's, I mean, I think you're on a good path. Profundity will take you another, until probably the next thing comes up, right? The next, um, at the end of the month when it comes up. Leia should be shored up within the next month and a half. Java is gonna take you a little bit longer, but that ROI on Java is just gonna help you so damn much. Um, Riva is going to be a short-term goal for you. Uh, ben Solo is going to be a short-term goal for you. Darth Bane you should have in the next two months. That should be a priority for you. Um, he's just too, too freaking good. Um, Zori should be a short-term goal. Um, I would recommend Scythe, like strongly. I'd, I'd recommend looking into that counter and refreshing that maybe once a month. Um, to kind of build out your fleet squad. I would recommend talking to your fleet squad and, and trying to get in on the Discord, um, especially once you have profundity uh, because it'll make your climb easier. And once you get into like that top 10 area with profundity or with, with the scythe counter, uh, you're gonna see this just big jump in your crystal income going forward. Um, your forest moon again i just think it's a remodding issue with where you're at right now uh once you have jabba rebel roundup to ct3 that's going to be something that's super um useful for you i don't i don't see anything that you're doing wrong with your account i just think that these are things that you should be looking at and i really strong i'm just so hesitant to give you this really set like long-term path because I do think you strongly are need to keep raid in the back of your mind. Um, I do think that, yeah, I mean, look, I'll, I'll show you like your discord. I, I say this every week. Um, my fleet discord, it's not like a pop in place to be like nobody talks in the fleet discord. The last message was, was a month and a half ago. Um, but just having, no, this is my payout channel, just having the payout channel is is super, super helpful because it keeps people from hitting you and you know who to hit and it makes it easier, um, especially if you're not climbing with Leviathan, you want as few people to hit you as possible. Um, but I would very strongly consider Scythe as more of a short to medium thing. Um, and looking into the scythe counter, uh, that I believe Bit Dynasty again probably has videos. Solo Straight, who's here, he has a great video that you know he and I are friends. But like when I used to do text um, reviews and I'd look up videos, his are the ones that would come up, and I'd laugh and I'd be like, "Oh man, this is a great resource. You should be looking at this." Um, I think it'll just make your life easier to do it that way. Um, and, and Mark Six, again, Leviathan should be on your radar from medium to long-term goal. So farming Mark Six five battles a day is not gonna hurt you. Farming Mark Six 10 battles a day is gonna be your option for, um, for an easier climb if you don't wanna prioritize Scythe and just do 25 um, crystal refreshes on that Mark Six. But overall, you are on a good path. Um, Jabba is kind of your end term, uh, but you do, you have to, you have to, you have to think about raid prominence if you want your guild, um, if you want your guild to take you seriously as the officer saying, hey, we're the officer team wanting people to do something, you need to be willing to bite the bullet on things that are guild related as well. Um, so it's just something to keep in mind not necessarily something that you need to do um, right off of the bat. So stay the course. 
but think of just some of those short-term things that I kind of pointed out to you as 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 things that should be actively actively on your mind. Um, with with that said, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We did eight of them this morning. My throat is killing me from doing eight of them this morning, especially with a cold. Um, next week, here's the thing. Next weekend, I have a crazy weekend. Uh, my students have a test, a color belt test on Friday night. Um, my black belts have their black belt test Saturday morning. My town has an important town event Sunday morning that I need to be at. So there's going to be no regularly scheduled brunch. Um, my wife will be out of town on Friday night. So after my thing Friday night, I, I might do a primetime thing. Um, but there's going to be, there's no, um, there's, it's not a, it's not a GAC week. It's not a GAC week. So I probably will end up doing something on Friday night, probably a conquest thing, maybe some roster reviews, um, maybe get one or two people on our, uh, discord to come in with me and do something. Um, so with that said, I'm, my wife and I were going to a brewery today. I'm going to get a little, um, we're going to get a little bit crazy and I'm going to get a little bit crunk before filming my my tales episode um guys if you're not on discord tomorrow starts territory battles limestone that's cool man that's fine do it pop it on discord i don't care clip it send it out to people my throat hurts it's killing me it's fine eight in the morning that's cool for me um we have the territory battles library that we're building out and it's going to be this, it's already a decent resource, but it's going to be a crazy resource for people for territory battles. So go check it out. It's there on our Discord. Send it to your guild. Send it to your alliance. Send it to people. Tell people about it. We, I have some of the biggest names in territory battles and in content creation working with me on this. Um, CD, who is uh, only on Discord. She has her own Discord as well. She's working with us on, on the territory battles library. Uh, Rhymus one who is in one of the highly efficient he's like an officer in one of the most highly efficient territory battles guild um, rising phoenix he's working with me on it some of the guys from my own guild are working with me on it uh, fat phil is working with me on it pico burrito is working with me on it so we have a really great team of people working on this territory battles uh, library I'd love to see you guys there, get the word out on it. I think it's gonna be an amazing resource for everybody. And going into tomorrow, if you have videos you wanna send, you know, send them in, submit them, we'll put them up if they make sense for us. Um, but with that said, have a great weekend. Hopefully I'll see you guys uh, Friday night. And I'm gonna go have some, uh, some tea, some, some pancakes and bacon uh, before, before we do our stuff. Uh, P6 squads. What do you mean? For um, so I mean, there's really not much going in on in phase six uh, right now for people. Um, if your guild is doing phase six like R9 stuff, yeah. If I have videos, I'm gonna put them up. Um, we have some day five stuff that we'll start putting up once we have it. Uh, once my gungans are all in R9, I'll be putting up some Ring of Kafreen stuff. Uh, Rymus has some Hoth like fleet battle um, videos that he's going to be putting up. We are going to be putting up everything right now. Let me show you before I before I, before I leave. This is basically what it looks like right now. It's not it's not super super exciting just because it's only my auto content and Rising Phoenix's content um, because we just released it. But there will be a submission channel here. We have everything broken down by planet, right? We have everything broken down by CM. Again, it's not super, super big at the moment as we start to build things out. A glossary of the teams, some notes on the battles, some videos to kind of help you guys through it. I think, so, you know, we go up to like Kessel, we go up to, um, to Lothal, um, I don't have anything for Lotho yet for the Phoenix CM. Uh, the Open CM, I have a few, right? Um, obviously, Malachor, Vandor, we don't have anything just yet. Ring of Kafreen, I should have some videos on it for this going forward. 
Um, I should have some videos for this within a month because of Jar Jar, but we're building it out and it's, it's, it is going to be an awesome resource. So with that said, guys, have a great weekend. Um, enjoy. Hopefully I see some of you uh, next Friday and, and tomorrow morning. Tune in for Tales Off the Hollow Tables because it'll be up in the morning.